Florida has more size and length on the interior. It's going to be a really fun match to watch. Well, Kyra Evans jumps up against Faith Dute, and we are underway. Michigan in their maze. Uniforms trimmed in blue, and Florida designated as the away team wearing their blue uniforms this evening. Florida's ball pressure early and their ability to disrupt Michigan and not let them run their stuff. You've got to take them deep into the shot clock. There's a turnover. And now here comes Atharu, who is fast indeed. That's a good look. And the basket scored by Rochelle Kyle, who looked a little surprised to be so wide open as we take a look at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Novant Health. There it is for Michigan. Again, a lot of new faces for this ball club as they had some veterans graduate and move on from last year. Leah Brown, who played in the league, Maddie Nolan, Emily Kaiser among them. Michigan plus three on the glass. They need to be on the offensive boards. Felia with her first shot, that was off the mark. Felia wearing number five for Michigan. As Deb mentioned, their only player averaging double figure scoring. Novant Health starting lineups for Florida, Makaru and Alberti Rindal, known as uh, Birdie, has really diversified her offensive game after being known mainly as a three-point threat earlier in her career. And Rashea Kyle, can we call her Big Shay? Yes, we can. Okay, she, and she's earned that name. And she's got all four points so far. Kyle is a transfer from Purdue, playing in her second year in Gainesville. Look at Duke doing a nice job of stunting and recovering out to Jordan Hobbs, who is a good three-point shooter. Yep, all over her, bringing that length. Rebound taken down by Matharu. This is where Matharu can be so dangerous because she puts you on your heels in transition. She's so good at pushing and attacking. Rindal floated it up as Felia tries to gather, attacks the paint, and draws the foul. Lauren Reynolds called for her first personal, a freshman who has brought a lot to this Florida offense. Even though Ophelia loses the handle a little bit right here, this is how fast she is up the floor. Like Florida has to do a better job in their transition defense. Both teams are going to be tested in that area tonight. Ophelia at the line. And you see the numbers averaging just under 15 points per game, but the field goal percentage is down from last year. About eight points, her three-point percentage also is down about 12 percentage points. But Kim Barnes of Rico says part of that, especially early on, Kilia thought maybe she had to do too much. I, I think she does sense a responsibility there, and it's good to see her get to the free throw line early in the game because she did not shoot any free throws in the last two, and they need her to be a three-level scorer. Gets to the line on average about four times per game, which is tops for this Michigan team that comes in nine and two on the season. Foul on Jordan Hobbs. And that sends Rashea Kyle. So we were sort of joking with Kelly Ray Finley, the head coach of Florida, that if they ran their first 10 possessions of the game in the paint, that they would probably score on seven of them. And it looks like that's what they've done so far. They've been very effective getting the ball to the front of the rim. And Kyle has accounted for all six of their points. Meanwhile, Michigan 0 for 3 from the floor. Celia, who appears to be in attack mode. Contact and Duke hits the ground along with Hobbs, and they're going to get Duke for the foul. What's interesting about Michigan, and I've always admired this about Kim Barnes or Rico's team, is they're not just trying to break the press. Like, if you want to press them and open up the floor, they've got good enough three point shooters on the back side of it. Now they've got to make a good decision with the ball, pushing it up the court, and they did just that the last time down. And Jordan Hobbs. Second leading scorer, averaging just under 10 points per game at the free throw line. And Jordan Hobbs, the last two games, has been quite productive. Goes one of two at the line. She's been moved to the four, the power forward position, after being a guard for the first several games. 
Kimborn Kim and Tariko went with a lineup change after they got absolutely pummeled by Toledo. Well, the thing I love about Jordan Hobbs playing that stretch four is that she's not just a three-point threat, she's a hybrid four for Kim Barnes Rico because she can make decisions with a ball in her hands. So like a guard, she's used to playing face up, she can handle, she's 6'3", she's got skill. I mean, she's a tough check. On the other end, they've got to try to take advantage of that with their speed. Coach says that Hobbs is the best passer on the team as well. Matharu, a little bit of daylight, and that's all she needed. The big 22-point game and a blowout win against Gardner-Webb. They won that game by 78 points. That's a new school record. We've seen quite a few of those around the country. Yeah, and guess what? When that happened, Florida's net went up by like 30 spots. Okay, so what does that tell you? It's point differential. It's not good. I, I agree. I think that needs to go away. This was also a concern of Michigan was the pressure and not getting beat, getting beat in transition after a turnover. Correa converts to Michigan down big early, takes a time out. Michigan is not yet in a field goal. Coming over from Texas, Myron, where she was honorable mention all Big 12, led the team with in uh, made three-point field goals, playing for Vic Schaefer, and yeah, the, so that's that's going to open up some more things, right? The, with the, there's basically it's there's no transfer rules anymore. Right. We went from <laughs> all these restrictions to no restrictions yep. to trying to put the restrictions back, which the coaches did agree on. Mm -hmm. There was a unanimous vote by university presidents for a one-time transfer. And then the coaches, everyone has a, a waiver that they apply for, and the federal judge, to Myron's point, removed that stipulation. And now you're okay, eligible to play, and you do not lose your year if you play now because there was a 14-day stay, and that, that's been removed. So that's more legalese than I ever cared that's to get involved in. Very well done. Michigan has yet to hit a field goal in this game. A couple of turnovers have led to... Baskets both times for Florida. Michigan in a zone. Faru with a nice floater. I mean, Kim Barnes-Rico has oh, to try yeah. to change the rhythm of the game, right? And I like Florida using their length and their quickness here to be disruptive with their defense. You know, we were talking to Coach Kelly Ray Finley as Hobbs launches from three. That's a nice catch and shoot from the perimeter. There's South Carolina and there's LSU. And then it feels like there's everyone else right now, and it's wide open after that. And the SEC with the, the two big dogs at the top, and as you mentioned, there's a lot of question marks surrounding teams. Tennessee finally, thank goodness, got Rakia Jackson back last night. There's it. There's two teams ranked in the league, and I was being sarcastic, a little facetious before, but uh, their net did go from 59 to 55 after they hammered Gardner Webb by 78 points. 78 points. Which, uh, and that is a factor, as we mentioned, in the net. And to Gardner Webb's defense, that is a new coach and a first year head coach. The officials looking at each other. One had his fist up, ready to call the offensive foul, and that's what we got. Tim Daly, Natasha Kamey, and Michael McDonald's McConnell are our officials this evening. So this is uh, one of the things that the NCAA officials want to clean up, and that is two whistles on a play. I like two whistles on a play personally because I think that means that it's right. You know, like especially on a block charge. But that play was in the lead's position, and the lead's supposed to have the primary. Correa called for her first personal foul. Michigan trying to get something going on offense. Cameron Williams, number 44, has checked in for them. If Florida doesn't turn Michigan over, they've sped them up on the offensive end. Michigan's going to have to get that cadence on the offensive end. Warren with the drive, double team, got the shot up anyway, and Williams is able to rip it. Moves it out of the hands of Duke. Yeah, big rebound right there. Here comes Hobbs. She's been effective early. Brett, one of two Australians on this team, fires away. She is a grad transfer from Bowling Green. She only made eight threes in the last game. Yeah. Eight for 11. She had 27 points against Miami of Ohio. 
This is fantastic when you look at this stat line. I mean, you talk about catch and shoot and being wide open. 27 points, 24 of which came from the three-point line. That's a nice career high. That certainly is. And uh, the eight threes, as uh, Sarah Van Meter, their, their excellent sports information director, said she that was the most in a game in the nation this year for about eight hours before Caitlin Clark <laughs> pummeled in eight threes in her game later that day. Was it eight or nine? Did she have nine in Des Moines? At least. Or maybe it was it 15? It was at least eight. So that, that eight just went, yeah. went by the wayside. But, uh, you know, Lisa Brett, a big pickup her first year at Michigan after playing her first four years at Bowling Green, where she got her degree. You mentioned Caitlin Clark, and she's 448 points away from tying Kelsey Plum. I, I hate to start the count at 448, but I think it's interesting, right? We're keeping an eye on it. Yeah, for her, that's not a lot. Hansen nails it. She has 18 games on Iowa's schedule remaining, not counting potentially three in the Big Ten and then whatever they do in the NCAA tournament, right? So it's pretty sure she'll get it. Six-nothing run here for Michigan thanks to a couple of threes, but Mafaro answers with her second triple of the evening. And that ends a scoring drought of a couple minutes for Florida. Hanson with the ball in her hands. A Missouri transfer. She's originally from Long Island. She started her career at Auburn. She's also a three-time yep. transfer, or two-time transfer. Three schools. Cups out for Brett Williams. Couldn't quite chase it down. The ball goes to Florida. Brett Williams, senior from Chicago, started every game last year, and started the first nine games this year. Has been coming off the bench since the revamped starting lineup took place after the Toledo loss. Good rivalry between Toledo and Michigan. Those two schools not very far apart. Williams gets the rebound. She leads the team in that category this season. Good change of pace by Hanson. What a nice take. Beautiful blow by the open floor. The last four games, Hanson's really picked it up on the offensive end. And Kim barnes Rico really challenged her today at shoot-around to, to play with IQ and continue to play with that measure of toughness that she brings to the top of the floor. This is a beautiful take right here. I got to say, it's a little bit of a weight room bucket as well as she manages the contact. Foul on Rimdahl, and that is the first two-point field goal for Michigan. And she has a chance for the three-point play. Two of the three years she was at Missouri, she started for Robin Pinchton. She only shoots 90% from the three, the free bad. throw line. It's pretty good. Got her degree in Columbia. Here's the turnover. Hanson guarded by Zippy Broughton. Number four for Florida. They're going to leave Williams alone out there. All the way across court. Shot clock into single digits. Oh, Hansen was able to pull the ball down before she traveled. And the follow doesn't go for Taylor Williams. Correa. Too strong. Williams and Kyle kind of tied up trying to get rebounding position. Kyle has had an excellent first half so far in first quarter because she has scored in the paint. She's rebounding the weak side. She's doing a good job of defending without getting in foul trouble. She's a presence in the paint in that drop coverage or her sagging on their man-to-man. -man. Kyle at 6'6", six, six, her second year at Florida. And last season, Average at about nine and a half points per game. Numbers up this year, playing about seven minutes more and impacting really both, both ends of the floor, as you mentioned. Double-double in the win against Gardner Webb. In their last game. Is that three double-doubles this year? Because she only had five all of last year, so her numbers have gotten better. 
Her five, so she's e she equals what she had last yep. year. Five double doubles this year, as you mentioned, only five last year, and there's the follow for Cameron Williams. And the travel. Michigan induces the turnover. It was an 11-2 start for Kelly Ray Finley's team, and, and Michigan called a timeout. They went to the zone, and they've settled in a little bit, getting that cadence on the offensive end that they play so well with. What a camp trader, number 11 in for Michigan. You might have heard her going, uh, calling for the ball. She was alone momentarily. And the foul is on Layla Reynolds, so she has two personal fouls. Jordan Hobbs has two for Michigan and has been on the bench ever since she picked up her second. Filia comes back in for Brett after a rest. Well, both of these coaches have the ability to go nine or ten deep. So, you know, that could factor into the, what I would call the two-foul rule. There's a lot of things that go into factoring in whether you leave a player on the floor with two fouls. I think the, the analytics and the conversation usually depends on fatigue, who your opponent is, you know, can you trust them, what kind of style of play is the game. All those things factor in. Taylor Williams, a sub-50% free throw shooter, missed them both, and then a travel on the rebound attempt. And here's some pressure from Michigan. Brock picked up the ball. Camp Schrader came in to take it. Ophelia, guarded by Rimdahl. Long three, it comes in. Absolutely buried by Hanson. Really good job by Kim Barnzarico, changing up the defensive looks. Oh, you can't get beat on the backside of that. That's Lauren Hanson not getting back. And no pressure on the ball. Correa with the finish. Baseline jumper falls. Filia on the score sheet. Her first field goal of the evening, and we're all tied up after Florida, led by nine earlier in this quarter. And Kelly Ray Finley trying to get Mataro back in for the last possession here. And I think she misses her point guard on the court right now, especially against the pressure of Michigan. Michigan with an opportunity to take its first lead. It's a three-second differential. Hanson looks over for some guidance from her head coach. Kind of swatted right away Correa's hand out there. She's from Long Island after all. All right, now they need a shot. And Hanson took a step as she tried to set up for the shot. Florida has just over five seconds to get off a shot, and they do indeed get Mataro in now. Okay, so a good offensive substitution, right? Because Mataro has, I'd say she has four, maybe five dribbles. Yeah, she can cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time. There's five dribbles, and she turns it over. Got the shot up, but originally Camp Schrader was able to get a hand on the original shot. And we are tied up at 19 apiece after one quarter of play in Charlotte. Dawn Staley has as much depth as she usually has, and the guard play to this point has been outstanding. It's hard to believe you can win 36 games, and some say they may be better. I think they were one guard away from winning the whole thing last year. Jariah Warren nails the three to get things started here in the second quarter. Pam Ward, Deb Antonelli, and Myron Metcalf joining you. Michigan and Florida playing for the first time in 11 years in women's basketball at this Jumpman Invitational. Felia, the leading scorer for Michigan on the season with the miss. Michigan has not shot the ball well. But they were down 13 to 2 at one point before they came to tie it. And there's Mataro's magic. There's the speed. And I'm not sure that, that maybe she didn't get an extra step, but she still blew by everyone in Mays. Maybe too fast for them to see that she was traveling. Mataro <laughs> in the double figures now with 10. Oh, 
Ophelia. Makes it just a little bit too short. Michigan really cognizant of getting back to try to slow down any transition opportunities. Oh, the Thunder on fire. Nails another three. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. She's coming off 22 points in just 14 minutes against Gardner-Webb. And she's got 13 here. 11 and a half minutes into this game. Ophelia yeah. finds it. She's good. I mean, she can stop on a dime. She can manage the point. She's got combo guard skills. She out of Cincinnati who has become the number one option this year. Florida's offense is clicking to start this second quarter. Correa gets the basket. Second year at Florida after starting her collegiate career at St. John's in New York. Williams too hefty, but the follow falls. But the other Williams, Taylor Williams. Outscoring Michigan 10 to 4 so far in this second quarter. 10 points in the first three minutes for them. And Layla Felia is the lockdown perimeter defender. She's got the Matharo assignment in the quarter court. Florida can't miss. That's four for four to start this quarter. Going by, Matharo has a height advantage on her, and there's Kyle Sandwich as she hits the floor. Michigan. Taylor Williams picks up her first personal foul for Michigan. Michigan played 10 players in that first quarter. Coach Burns Rico says this is the deepest team that she's had in quite a while. And they're long and they're athletic. They have a lot of perimeter size. Florida went eight deep in the first quarter themselves. McFarrow lost her footing, but was able to calmly get her over to Kyle. So plenty of time left on the shot clock. Rimdahl has not taken a shot yet for Florida, one of their three-point threats, but Everybody else is scoring. And that's where Matharo's game is showing some maturity in that ball screen offense. And that's the part of her game that can, needs to continue to evolve for Florida to have success. Because she's going to have the ball in her hands. So she needs, she needs to be able to read the second level on that ball screen offense. And there's an offensive foul, a moving screen on Elise Stuck. Michigan foul on the Elise Stuck. So the three games this year, and now coming off the bench for Michigan. Michigan being outscored by 10 points here in this third quarter. Florida's not missing. Michigan staying in drop coverage with Kyle setting that ball screen. And good job closing up the gaps and getting a deflection and steal. Yep, stuck in Philia that time. Combined to force the turnover. So she has a mismatch on Kyle. Felia, right from the top of the lane for three. That was a really good decision by Brett because she had the mismatch with Kyle and she made Matharo help, which allowed Felia to set her feet on the top of the key. Felia and Hansen with nine points apiece, leading the way for Michigan. But literally, Florida has not missed from the floor in this quarter. Now seven for seven, Correa into double figures. Wow, that was nice. Sweet move by Hanson. Okay, I'm all right with yeah. We yeah, got, I'm all right with this. Got some offense. How about for the game? Florida shooting 78 percent from the floor, hitting all seven of their shots in this quarter. Rimdahl hasn't taken a shot yet. She's been patient. Here we go. Out of the double team. Wow. You know what it's like? She does a little dribble handoff, but she quickly rolls into space. She doesn't go too deep into the corner. It allows her to quickly get set off that double team. SEC all freshman last year. She is from Denmark. 
She's played with some national teams in Denmark since she was 16 years of age. That is thrown to the Florida bench. Another Michigan turnover as Bertie Rimdahl gets it going. I mean, this is a terrific job. Michigan closes the trap. Rimdahl just short, pops, and... Sporting sponsor as well. Everybody's been talking about this court. The black, the white, the design. I want to put it in my driveway if you'll let me. What went into this design, and what does that add to this event? Well, again, it just is, it's a great reflection of the Jordan brand, emphasis on doing things perfectly. And then Traders took the court and, and made it all come to life. And we think it's the best looking court in America. I think you're right about that. Thanks for the hospitality. What an incredible event, that is. Great. Thank you very much. Back to you all. You know, Danny Morrison is a class act, and he has run a class event here with the partners that he mentioned in Novant and the Jordan brand. But this court is clean, and it's clear, and it's uncluttered, and it fits the classiness of this entire event. This is the second year of a three-year in Charlotte with the Jumpman brand. And uh, these four schools, uh, high, uh, Oklahoma and Michigan, um, North Carolina, we'll see later on. The men and the women played uh, yesterday from these teams as well. Uh, all four of these universities represent the Jordan brand, and that was the uh, creativity of Joe Castiglione, the AD at Oklahoma, and Danny Morrison to put this event together. So uh, it's wonderful to be here, and the media game was really competitive this morning. Let me just say that. Any injuries? No injuries. Yes, that's always a good thing. <laughs> And coming up to cap this invitational, North Carolina and Oklahoma men will be playing in a much anticipated matchup. There's an Michigan offensive foul. Matharu has been the difference maker as she checks back into game, Pam, right? Because Michigan closed it to a one possession game and then. Kelly Ray Finley puts Matharu back in the game and she gets buckets. Florida still has not missed a shot in this quarter and Correa being disruptive. Good defense by Felia, but Correa just stuck with it. It's a real aggressive play by Leilani Correa who, who does a good job of anticipating and shoots the gap. Two-time first team all Big East performer when she was at St. John's in Felia. Bottled up by Correa, gets her feet shuffled for another Michigan turnover. Michigan's gone over two minutes now without a point. It has been a terrific quarter for Florida, outscoring Michigan by 12. Here's Hobbs back in the game. Has been sitting for a while after picking up two quick fouls. Pulls her way in there and draws a foul. It's a great straight line drive by Hobbs. You don't see two hips, two shoulders as you approach the scoring area. You keep going until somebody gets in front. Nobody gets in front. And she draws a foul. Jariah Warren got there a little bit too late, so she was called for the foul. Delivers at the free throw line. Gets them both. 83% free throw shooter on the season. And more subs coming in. Hobbs goes out. The offensive defensive substitution. Hobbs uh, playing with a couple of fouls as number 33 Taylor Williams comes back in. First year at Michigan after playing at Western Michigan. Rimdahl has two shots. There are two threes, and they both win it. How efficient is that? Just taking advantage of Lauren Hansen fell down and couldn't get up fast enough. As a team, Florida six of seven from distance. The defense to cut off Ophelia, who wanted to test the baseline. Brent oh. got stuck by Matharu. She's everywhere. So quick and athletic. Smallest player on the floor. Here's a long three. Just back rimmed it. 
Now Hansen comes away with it. Michigan shooting just 38% from the floor. They've gone three and a half minutes without a field goal. And another turnover. This is a breakaway. No way you're catching her. Oh, oh was such a weapon. Latest run, as you see, a 10-2 advantage for Florida. As we approach a minute and a half to go in the first half. Shot off the mark. Oh, big rebound. Yes. Great. Taylor Weak side glass. That's Taylor Williams. Graduated from Western Michigan, now finishing things out at Michigan. Look to go, and Correa called for the charge, drawn very well by Brett. Brett just jumps the screen. She knows she's going that direction. Watch this right here. She gets her hips over the top of that ball screen, and just a little shove. Correa says there wasn't much there. Well, she did get her hand up, though, as we clearly saw on the replay. That's the second foul on Correa. Got yeah, two-for-one opportunity here. Here's Hobbs continuing to attack the basket. The blue jerseys underneath. Broughton, chancy pass that's collected by Hanson. But Florida has three players back. Another two-for-one opportunity, but Michigan slowed it to get into it, and they allowed Florida to get back and match up in transition. Well, Michigan has had a, quite a few offensive rebounds, but they're not really taking advantage of those second-chance opportunities. This is the second quarter where Florida just on fire with their first nine shots from the floor in the second quarter while Kim Barnes and Rico's club has struggled. Missed six of their last seven shots. To really take the last possession here, even though there's a, a little bit of a differential. See if you can take the shot with enough time to get an offensive rebound. Go to their box set. There's Hanson and Another travel. I'm not a big fan of that misdirection sometimes when, especially when the pass was behind her, it was not a high enough angle to make that pass. Nothing. Michigan turnover. Both teams a little bit wild here to finish off the quarter. Michigan. Pardon me, just Michigan with fouls to give, so there was a foul. Out, out of control a little bit. There's a second foul on Alyssa Brett, who has not scored in this game. 0 for 7 for the Aussie, including missing all four of her three ball attempts. Florida with a very dynamic second quarter, outscoring Michigan by 13, take the lead in the locker room. And make her hesitate so that you can get everyone back in transition to build the wall. You take a look at the field goal percentage. Yes, 72%, that was not a misprint. 72% for Florida for the entire game, even higher than that in the second quarter in which they outscored Michigan 26 to 13. Michigan really struggling from the floor. She's not struggling. Rimbaud has put up three threes and they've all been buried. Well, it's a good throwback by Matharo. That one hard dribble and then you pitch it back and it gives Rimdahl time to get organized. Rimdahl got off to a slow start. Matharo and Hansen going after the ball. Hansen was able to rescue it, but then another turnover as Brett stepped on the sideline, Alyssa Brett, the grad transfer from Bowling Green, averaging eight points per game, missed all seven of her shots in the first half. 
You know, I like that Kim Barjarico starts the second half in zone. I think it's important that the first possession was zone just to give Florida something to think about, but now they're back in their man. Oh, they lost Duke, and fortunately for Michigan, the pass was not on the mark, and Duke a little bit slow getting up, a 6'4 senior, fifth year senior from Vancouver, British Columbia. The only player who started every game this year. Head coach Kelly Ray Finley was very quick to get out there along with the athletic trainer. Wow, you, you see that ankle just kind of rolled it. I mean, that's the most wide open anyone's been at the front of the rim. I, I hope she's gonna be okay. And that left foot and being helped out. Joe Michelini is on the left. Duke, the only player to start every game, as I said, this year for this Florida team is Coach Finley, like Coach barnes Rico on the other sideline, have been tinkering with lineups. Coach Finley, before they came out for the uh, second half, I don't know, caught it on camera, she gave uh, Hey, Mathara, a nice hug before she came out. She kind of, you can see why she would do that. Mathara was just terrific in that first half. 15.6 of seven shooting, including three threes. And then in her third year, went to Colorado State. She graduated in 2008. Maybe the second most famous women's basketball player out of Colorado State. You mean Becky Hammond? Yeah, Becky Hammond has done some <laughs> things. You know what, Kelly Ray Finley is an excellent teacher and she's a terrific communicator. Like, her players know exactly what she expects from them. They're starting to understand their roles better. Uh, I think she's done a really good job with this team. And that might have been the most fluid play run by Michigan. Kyra Evans gets the basket. And still the 14 point advantage for the Gators. Here's zone on a make, man on a miss. Faru with her few misses, but another rebound for Kyle. That's a lot of size at the front of the rim for Kelly Ray Finley's team, 6'6". Six, six. Kyle started the game scoring points in the paint early, and they're going right back to it. It's a great offensive rebound. I think that shot was too forced, though, by Mataro. And she was, did not have a good look at it, but bailed out by Kyle. Hobbs, a couple of early fouls. Oh, good cut. Put the brakes on her a bit in the first half, and that good cut has brought about a Florida foul. So, drop coverage in the middle third. On the side, what, Mich what Florida's doing is they're trapping, and Michigan does a nice job of moving the ball and then the cut to the basket. That's a scoring cut. Rindall picks up her second foul. Brett goes to the free throw line for the first time today. Coming up next, big triple header rolls on as number 11, North Carolina. The men's game takes on number 10, Oklahoma, right here in this building, the second annual Jumpman Invitational. And then we cap the night off out west in Phoenix, Arizona, and Alabama. They stay with us all night long. Oklahoma is one of four unbeatens left on the men's side. And North Carolina is coming off a couple of losses in a really hard-fought game against Kentucky. Uh, but Armando Baycott only had four field goal attempts in that game, and R.J. Davis averages 22 points a game, and R.J. Davis told me today that he's gonna get the ball inside to Armando tonight. Sounds like a good strategy, and we see the Carolina Blues starting to trickle in and fill up the stands for our second game. North Carolina women with a big win last night here. Yes. Over Oklahoma. Oklahoma really struggling from three. Hobbs rims out. Thoreau gets it, but the little friendly fire ran into Kyle, so she was unable to put on the Jets and start a break. Layla Filia, again, the best defender on the perimeter, has got the Matharo assignment in the quarter court. Nice. 
spin move and the finish for Layla Reynolds, who only played five minutes in the first half because she picked up a couple of early fouls, but she's a very important freshman for this team. Top 20 recruit for Kelly Ray Finley, one of the most decorated recruits that she's ever had at Florida. Randy Ryan, Prince George's County, Maryland kid, and the chance for a three-point play. Count it. Layla Reynolds, the 6'1 freshman, back to back in the open floor this time, handles some contact and scores. That's an important foul for Michigan because Jordan Hobbs now has three. And both of these teams have some WNBA players helping out on the sidelines. For more, let's go to Myra Metcalf. Yeah, Ariel Atkins has been a player development coach and Michigan helped a lot. And Ryan Howard, WNBA standout, is playing the same role for Florida. I talked to Layla Reynolds. I said, how has she impacted you? She said, she's shown me how to be a big, powerful guard because that's what she is at the next level. And I think you're seeing some of that with that last play from the young Layla Reynolds. Yes, and uh, Ryan Howard with Florida Roots. Her mom, RJ, played at Florida in the late 80s into the early 90s and actually got to play against our own Carolyn Peck when Carolyn was at uh, Vandy. RJ's in the house. I yeah. saw her earlier, got to speak with her. And great family, and Ariel Atkins is on the, there's Ariel, uh, over on the Michigan bench. And Atkins, an assistant coach for player development, and... I take Coach Barnes Rico was just effusive in her praise of having someone of, of Atkins' caliber on her bench. Rimbaud still has a miss from four, but that was her first two. They had a relationship in USA Basketball, Atkins and Barnes Rico, and that is translated into this opportunity for Michigan. Well, I think it's so important to show these young players what work looks like. If you're playing in the W and there's only 144 spots, you work every day to hone your craft and stay in shape. And I think that's what Ariel and Ryan bring to both these programs. A real up-close look at what hard work looks like and what it takes to be a next-level player. Both of them also in the U.S. national team camps. Ariel won a gold in Tokyo. They will start things up again in February before a tournament in Belgium. That's a turnover. For more on Ariel, let's go back to Myron. Yeah, I talked to Layla Villa about her relationship with her. She said she's taught her how to pay attention to details. Before recent practice, Ariel Atkins showed her film of her guarding Sue Bird. She said, Layla, I want you to watch this. Layla did. She says, I think I learned a few things. Ariel Atkins said, great. Go watch it again and find something else. She said that's the attention to detail that Ariel Atkins has brought to this staff. Had a chance to talk to Ariel about her conditioning because, you know, the Mystics uh, in the WNBA could look a little different next year. We're not sure, um, you know, who's, who's in and who isn't. But uh, the one consistent is Ariel, and she looks really in great shape. She's thinner. She is in condition. She's working on her explosiveness and her speed right now. And, of course, uh, her skill set's outstanding. And on both ends of the floor, she's a tremendous defender as well. And there's Barnes and Rico talked about when she first came in, the players, Ariel was like, nobody nobody really talked to her for, like, the first three weeks. And fan grilling, they kind of, uh, because Atkins is so accomplished. But since then, she said Ariel's attention to detail that, that Myron talked about, too. She does spreadsheets on each player about what she is seeing and what she has talked to them about what they have to work on. I see a lot of young women treat you the same way, Pam. <laughs> no spreadsheets. Not the spreadsheet. No. No, the fangirl. Like, here comes no, Pam no, Warren. Right. Watch out. Hey, who is that old one? Uh, well, Atkins and Howard, definitely, for both teams, have been tremendous assets. Another foul. That's, that's one good thing, right, when they're able to expand the coaching staffs for in women's college basketball it has afforded this opportunity for people like Atkins and Howard to, to affect the next generation of players. There's a lot of coaches that fought for this extra position for young women to have an opportunity like Ariel and Ryan Howard and Sylvia Hatchell was one of them, former University of North Carolina coach. Michigan continuing to Kind of muck things up. They forced quite a few turnovers. Filia with a very good look. Left it short. 
Rebound by Reynolds, who has had a really good third quarter. Well, Michigan has to find a way to change the rhythm of the game. I mean, down 20, you've got to look at it like, let's see if we can get it to 10 by the fourth quarter and then cut it from there. First time that Rindall has missed a shot. Michigan's missed its last four. Hobbs crashes to the floor. We will take a timeout. Florida up 20. Uh, so many horrible but yet inspiring stories like Ed's and what impact he's left on our industry and why we'll continue to keep supporting his fund so that we can create opportunities for new people to get a chance to work in our industry and our field. And that, you know, makes me think about later tonight, you know, we have the University of North Carolina playing in their first game since Eric Montrose passed of cancer. 52 years of age, he was diagnosed in March, and if you knew Eric, he was a gentle giant and an incredible, classy ambassador, not just for the University of North Carolina, but for basketball in general. And everyone that he talked to had such nice things to say. Another young man who was taken from us, and I know North Carolina, all their alums and fans playing and uh, watching tonight with a heavy heart as North Carolina will play. The men getting ready to take on Oklahoma after this game is completed. And Gosh, Kelly Ray Family's club. Impressive. Impressive. Yep, yeah, really good. Uh, I mean, I knew, I saw him in uh, the Bahamas. I watched him for a couple of days playing at Baja Mar, and I knew they were athletic and skilled in the guard spots. But now they're starting to put it all together, which makes them really dangerous, because they're connected on the defensive end, and their collective IQ has gotten better about understanding their offense. And at the same time, Coach Finley has put in some stuff that's new, that will trigger the best out of her players. I think that's the essence of coaching. Tough turnaround, falls short, but Taylor Williams stuck with it and came up with it, and now Macy Brown, number two in Mays, is in, a true freshman from East Grand Rapids, Michigan. Coach Barnes and Rico trying to find some combination that works for her team that really since the Second quarter has really struggled on offense. And foul on Warren. Her second sends Ophelia to the line. But Friday night NBA action. The only one on ESPN schedule. It's West Coaster. Steph and the Warriors hosting the Wizards, who finish a, are finishing up a four-game West Coast road trip. Jordan Poole making his return to the Chase Center. Coverage starts 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on Friday nights. We are in the building where the Charlotte Hornets play NBA basketball. It's beautiful Spectrum here. Spectrum Center. Yes. Nice location, too. It's with the uptown section of Charlotte. Lots of stuff around the arena. And this... Event, the Jumpman Invitation in the second of three years. Uh, brings in a lot of commerce to this community. This event's like a $10 million event in the city of, Charles, of uh, Charlotte. Uh, it's a really important event for an economic economy around what Charlotte is doing. And, and Danny Morrison, who we interviewed earlier, they're getting ready for the Duke Mayo Bowl coming up in a couple of days. So I have tomorrow to, to reorganize, and then they'll get ready for... Uh, North Carolina and West Virginia coming in here to play football. Tar Heel fans getting a, a, a triple dose. They had the women here last night, the men tonight, and then football in a couple of days. Michigan has not scored in four minutes. Still can't get anything going as Williams couldn't gather it underneath. This game was tied at 19 apiece after one quarter of play. And since then, it has been all Florida, just 21 points since for I'm, Michigan. I'm gonna give some credit to the Florida defense for some of that because they have been disruptive. And there's a nice extra pass for wide open three. And look at Mathara hustle for the rebound. And she gets 
bumped out of bounds. Foul on Taylor Woodson, a freshman from Minnesota. But their defense again, Pam, is what I'm talking about with, with Florida. As we take a look at part of what Michigan's struggled with against the Florida defense. And nine wins, you see they've shot the ball pretty well and they've struggled in not shooting it well and scoring makes up for a lot of things that you might be weak at and uh, it, it can mask some of your deficiencies, that's for sure. Right now they're just shooting 33% in this game. The previous losses to Ole Miss down in the Bahamas and then the Toledo something. They lost 69-46. Changed up their lineup because of that. But this Florida team that's part of the problem is they can't stop Florida from scoring. Felia takes on Rimdahl. I mean, you have a three on one and you can't score. Yeah, that kind of, that might be just a microcosm of what this night has been so far for Michigan. Even when they look like they're in good shape to score, they don't do it. And then Mataro answers on the other side. I mean, she is a scoring point guard. She is thinking score first, pass second. She just crosses up Layla Filia and gets inside the paint, and she's gotten two feet in the paint all night. Mika has been a big difference maker, particularly in that second quarter when they outscored Michigan by 13 in what had been a tied game after one. Cameron Williams has three fouls. Matharo has a three-point play. Injury from Michigan, number 22, Evans. Evans coming back in, a sophomore from Australia, one of two Australians, along with Alyssa Brett on this team. Just over two minutes left to go in the third quarter. Thoreau slices into the lane. Rebound tapped and controlled by Stuck. Hanson, the point guard for Michigan. Team that has gone five minutes now without a field goal. And that fouls. Hanson drives into the lane. Nice pass from Evans. Yeah, nice give and go right there. Good basket cut. Try to get in a paint, try to get something easy. Good foul now on Warren. Jaya picks up her third. And takes a seat. Sends Hansen to the line. Coming up next Saturday, December 30th, right here on ESPN2, a college basketball triple header begins with a women's game at noon Eastern time. Number one, South Carolina, going to go up to Greenville, North Carolina, to take on the Pirates of ECU, East Carolina. So join us for that game. Can't wait. That'll be after the holidays. Yeah, always, always fun to see South Carolina. Make that trip to Greenville, and Florida just keeps slicing and dicing. It's great. Tahina Pow Pow has become one of the top point guards in the country for Dawn Staley, and under Dawn's leadership, she's become uh, even better at what she does, and especially with all that talent she has around her to distribute. Yeah. Raise some eyebrows when Pow Pow left Oregon and chose South Carolina, but it certainly has been mutually beneficial. Hanson hits the three. Lauren Hanson with 18 points. That is a new season high for her. At 16 and a win at Harvard earlier on. She is a six of nine from the floor, three of four from three. And quite frankly, the only Wolverine, who has a good shooting percentage tonight. Brett still 0 for 7. Felia 3 for 11. And Matharo just 
can slice it through the defense anytime she wants. In her first year here at Florida, which is her third school, and we've already mentioned that what a difference maker she is going to be for the Gators this year. She graduated on Saturday, as did Zippy Broughton, who graduated again. She got her master's degree, so congratulations to them. A big week. Some pressure now. One opportunity for Michigan. Delia, that's a tough shot. And a whistle behind the play as a couple of players hit the deck. And the foul is on Lee Stuck. And it's her second personal foul. Stuck's on the weak side right here. I don't know about that. I think Kim Bonjarico is just not happy right now. <laughs> yeah, she's not happy about a lot of things. That call being one of them down now by 22 points. Correa at the line, her second year at Florida. She's the Big East Player of the Year at St. John's back in 2020. She was a freshman. Sixth player of the year. And here we go. Not much of a difference at all between the two clocks. Hanson directing traffic. And coming off that flare screen, and Correa does a great job of staying lock and trail around that curl. Julia kicks it out. Michigan. Has missed nine of its last 10 shots. And the 10 of its last 11. They have only scored 13 points in each of the last two quarters and trail big after three quarters of play. Florida thumping Michigan right now. Pam Ward, Deb Antonelli, and Myron Metcalf joining you. And yes, Michigan shooting just 31% for the game. And were it not for Lauren Hansen, who's six of nine, the rest of the team, Lauren, six of nine, their point guard, the rest of the team shooting just 22%, eight of 36. Are you surprised by what you're seeing here, Doug? Well, you know, I mean, I'm a little surprised that Michigan didn't shoot the ball a little bit better. I mean, as a team, they're 44%, but they're, they usually assist on 51% of their baskets, and tonight they have well, they're at 50%, but they've only made 14. You know, and Hobbs, if she did get foul trouble in the first quarter, could have been a difference for them. Well, we could see what she can bring and what she can do with her size and frame playing that stretch four position. She joins Felia and Hansen in double figures. Now, this is something that Kelly Ray Finley told me she put in was the dribble drive for Matharo. I mean, Mathara doesn't have any problem running any offense. <laughs> She's just so quick. Getting by Brett. Kyle pops. Nice. Right. However, right. having said that, Pam, she is comfortable running the dribble drive because playing for Vic Schaefer the number of years that she did, that's a big staple of their offense. So she is capable of running that, and I think it's a nice tweak for everyone that's playing Florida coming up to scout, knowing that you got to prepare for this now. And Faro bringing a whole different dimension to this team. Lauren Hansen continues with her hot hand. Continues to build on her season high now with 21 points. Michigan number zero. Brett just picked up her third foul, and this Brett not going to be pleased. She's coming off a career high 27 points, hit eight threes against Miami tonight, one point. Well, and Kelly Ray Finley's team did a really good job of closing out on her and not giving her a good look to the rim. These guards from Florida are tough. 
They're yes. good off the bounce. They're long and athletic. They're committed to playing good D. And then Rendog gives them something a little bit different because she can really shoot it. Brett, a little bit late getting over to Mafaro, but Mafaro missed the shot and another whistle on the rebound. Ball goes over to Michigan. Out on Layla Reynolds, that is her third for Florida. Florida shooting 63% for the game. A lot of fouls and a protestation on that last call. As Reynolds quickly picked up her fourth, and she's going to go up. Go out. It's Jariah Warren coming back in. Hanson. Back rim, Brett got the offensive rebound, but then threw it away. This team did a really good job establishing the baseline first, using their size on the inside, and then getting the ball in the paint off the bounce. They are really tough to check. That's just nine points from the rest of the seven Gators that have hit the floor tonight. But plenty of offense. Mutharu, oh my. Cannot lose her. And you know what? That's a really hard post up in the paint by Kyle that occupied one and a half defenders that left Mutharo wide open. Oh, right now with 22 points for the second game in a row, Michigan gets the basket from Evans. And an offensive foul drawn by Brett. A little bit out of control. Nowhere to go, into traffic. So these are the plays that Kelly Ray Finley knows her team's gonna have to clean up. That's a good call by the official. Third foul on Correa. Here's head coach Kelly Ray. In her third year, kind of came in. His name is a permanent head coach in February of 2022. Coaching change down in Florida, had been an assistant there for four years, an associate head coach for a couple, and the interim head coach before the 21-22 season, before she was named permanent, whatever that means, head coach. And during that season, she's done a good job. Very impressive tonight. It's a chancy pass, Felia was able to rescue it. Single digits. Nothing's come easy for Field with no, that was a nice finish. I mean, she gets her shoulders over her thigh pads like a running back, which is the way I love watching her. It's a really great way to drive to the basket. Hard to knock her off her line. And left open just for a second, and that's all it took. And then the extra move for Jariah Warren. outscoring Florida in this quarter by three, but the last couple of quarters, they have about 49 points. And the board for Kyle, who is creeping closer to a double-double. That's her ninth board to go along with 13 points. And there is Kyle's 10th rebound. Sixth time this season, 11th time in Big Shea's career that she's had a double-double. Underneath and another nice finish. You can just see Michigan has lost their will and Florida is just running their stuff getting some really good looks at the front of the rim now, off penetration. Michigan will play Florida A&M at home Friday afternoon game, and then their big game against Ohio State coming up Saturday, December 30th. That'll be a noon game in Ann Arbor, Ohio State. 
that's going to be a formidable opponent, to say the least. Oh boy, that'll be a good one. I mean, Jason Sheldon is, I think, one of the top guards in the country, and Cody McMahon is playing really well. Kevin McGuff has a team that experienced just a few possessions away from the Final Four last year, and they've got a good bulk of their team back. Approaching four minutes to go in this one. Kyle passes out of the double team. Rimdahl couldn't get it to go. And so this is Brett. In her third straight start today. And there's another walk. Oklahoma. Uh, JV and McCullough is the other along with Ortega Owa. They are combining for 30 points and a little bit more than 55% from the floor. They, they are really good. And this is a three and D look for Porter Mosier and his team at Oklahoma. That's really good. That game will be on ESPN. Feel you. Uh, we got a nice look. So uh, when we're finished here, turn on over to ESPN to see that game. Deb will call, will call it with another icon, David Bryan. Definitely an icon. He needs security when he enters the building. Everyone wants to talk He's to the him. Man. Should be a good one. A couple of highly ranked teams. That's a tie up. Cameron Williams gets the held ball, possession arrow in favor of Michigan. So, uh, sort of my advice for Kim Barnes Rico would be the same for what it was for Jenny Baranchak at Oklahoma last night that really struggled against North Carolina is uh, you can look at some of this, but you got to let it go. Like, you got to learn from it, but you might want to burn it, throw it out the bus window, run over it with your car. I'm not sure what you want to do with the film. What kind of lessons can you learn from this game? Um, I, I think your defense has to get better at, at, at penetration, you know, containing penetration. I also think that they've got to continue to move the ball. You know, you, you got to move to get both sides, maybe a third side, especially when you struggle. Woodson, pardon me, with the bucket. See, that's penetration baselines. Get two sides. The defense shrinks. You're open at the top of the floor. And meanwhile, this Florida team looking mighty impressive. And they will play Winthrop on the 30th. It will be their first home game in 42 days. They last played there when they lost to tight one to Florida State in mid-November. Building booked for the volleyball program, which usually has a deep run in the NCAA tournament, but uh, the volleyball program had key injuries, only lasted one weekend. And this is this is quite a road trip, road games, and then some uh, neutral sites like this one as well. I think you can build some really good team chemistry. And, and before exams, get a lot of study hall in. Oh, yeah. Hillary Finley said that she hopes that this extended road trip, or you know, they're getting back to campus, but not playing at home in 42 days will indeed uh, pay dividends later on in the season. So as the team like he, likes each other, that certainly hopes. That's a lot of time spent on the road. Coach with Rimdahl next to her. Rimdahl, after a slow start, got her shot on. Well, oh, I can tell you from watching Florida a month ago at Baja Mar and watching them now, they have made significant strides. Uh, their defense is better. Mataro's got a little bit better handle on distributing the basketball, not just, uh, you know, looking for her own offense. One of the great traits of a good point guard is making everyone else better. But hey, when, you know, you can drive it from one rim to the other and no one can stop you, that's impressive. And here she goes. She stole it, took it all the way down, and drew yet another foul. She's been a huge difference maker. Not many people are as fast as her, but Michigan certainly has struggled trying to contain her on both ends of the floor. I mean, a live ball turnover, and the floor feels like it's tilted, and she's heading to the rim. Eyes up. Brett, frustrating night coming to a close as she heads to the bench scoring just one point. She missed all eight of her shots from the floor. So this is a game that Brett certainly would like to flush. Florida will open up their SEC schedule January 4th. And that was you. Oh, that's a nice gift, isn't it? Yeah. Hello, happy uh, new year. Yeah, exactly. 
Mardi Gras every day down there with Kim Mulkey. It is madness. They sold over 7,500 season tickets down in Baton Rouge. You know, my nickname for Kim Mulkey when she took the LSU job was ROI, Return on Investment, and she's done that. Very quickly. Way ahead of schedule. Yep, getting the national championship last year. This Florida team will play at Kentucky in mid-February, so Ryan Howard, who's an assistant coach, director of player personnel, will be going back to her alma mater with Florida. Field yet. There are a lot of schools celebrating their 50th anniversary of having women's basketball on their campus. Kentucky is one of them, and I'm sure they'll enjoy seeing Ryan when she comes to Absolutely. Always good to have her back. This Florida team, by the way, was picked 10th in the SEC by the media in, the, in that conference this year. And they're showing a lot more tonight. Boy, Mitharo, have yourself a night. Nails another three. She is five of nine from distance. Wow. She's been impressive. We knew the speed was a factor, but her ability to read the second level and her shot-making ability outside the arc has really improved as well. So Matharu has tied her career high with 27 points. Third time she has done that. This is her third school. Rico now emptying the bench. Lucy Brown back into the game. This Michigan team. And Schrader at the line. If you're just joining us, this game was close. It was 19 to 19 after the first quarter, but since then. Florida hitting 60% from the floor for the game. Paige Clawson checks in for the first time for Florida, a six-foot junior from Naples. Inside, 50 seconds to go. Michigan will fall to nine and three on the season. Florida will pick up their eighth win. With rescue. Brea, though, trying to get it underneath. Ten seconds to shoot. I want to thank our crew who are doing all four of these games in two days. Kyle Binder, our very good producer. All these guys, the crew, you and Dave O'Brien over on the men's side. Debbie doing all the games as well. A lot of hard work and some good stuff coming out of Charlotte. Yeah, a lot of fun to be with you, Pam. Always fun to be with you. Unfortunately, the games weren't as fun, but I'm really looking forward to your nightcap with, with Dave O'Brien. <laughs> Holy smokes. Should be fun. North Carolina, Oklahoma men coming up on ESPN. Oklahoma number seven in the country, undefeated. North Carolina number 11, coming off a really great game against Kentucky. R.J. Davis, one of the most exciting guards in the nation to watch for North Carolina. Just south of 22 points a game. And uh, Oklahoma, they are efficient. They cut hard, they pass, they move the ball, they're locked in defensively. Should be a good one. Seventh time this year, Florida has scored at least 80 points, and the eighth time they have held an opponent under 40% field goal point. What an impressive performance. Mathuru with 27, tying her career high. 